EA caused lots of news last year, but what was certainly one of the most seismic developments of gaming news in 2017 was Electronic Arts closing down the widely loved studio Visceral Games to reevaluate their single player Star Wars game to better meet their own standards of what they thought stood a better chance of making them more money down the road. Fans of the studio were left upset, and gamers in general were reminded of why EA has become the punching bag of the AAA video game publisher community at this point. Aside from the headline and obvious reasons to be concerned or upset about EA closing Visceral, there was another takeaway from their explanation. Even though EA did mention that the decision to change things about Visceral's project wasn't solely because they wanted to change a single player game into a service, they did beat around that idea by using phrases like tracking closely with fundamental shifts in the marketplace and delivering an experience that players wanted to come back to and enjoy for a long time. So it's not much of a logical leap to infer what they were talking about here, and that they were essentially saying that Visceral's Star Wars game wasn't closely enough aligned with current trends in gaming. Well, what else could those trends be? Keep in mind, this statement was before EA learned the hard lessons of Battlefront 2's microtransactions blowing up in their face, so it's fair to assume that EA just wanted to focus more on making Star Wars games that continue to generate money after they're sold. EA is obviously no stranger to this technique, as they have been betting on it with most of their major releases for all of the last several years and most of this year. And they're not exactly wrong with the basic premise. Multiplayer focused games with tons of microtransactions do stand a better chance of pulling in more cash in a shorter amount of time than single player games, generally speaking. Of course, as EA is well aware though, things do change. While the past several years have seen many success stories with multiplayer and free to play games that offer less at the get go, but become fuller, richer experiences once players decide to shell out more cash. Since then, many developers have shown that single player experiences are still in great demand and when done right, can generate plenty of sales without the backlash that games with microtransactions tend to get. Obviously, Sony and Nintendo have been doing their thing consistently for the past several years by usually relying on the hardcore offline audience. But publishers can sometimes dismiss that because Sony and Nintendo aren't just game publishers, but they have all of the financial backing and resources of a massive electronics company, and therefore they can afford to take more risks. However, one publisher has been challenging EA's newly adopted philosophy on their own turf and with their own rules. I speak of course of Bethesda. Last year's Wolfenstein 2 and The Evil Within 2 landed right outside the top 10 selling games of the month, with Evil Within at 13 and Wolfenstein at 14. Although it's important to note that for some reason Bethesda does not report digital sales to the tracking firm that that calculates these figures, and it's safe to assume that they would probably be in that top 10 list if they had done that. But even still, those two games have held their value, and even now, you'd be hard pressed to find them for much less than half of their original price. On top of that, they've continued to get support to the glee of many fans, including but not limited to a first person mode for Evil Within 2. Doom and Dishonored 2 reviewed and sold extremely well in 2016, and they've both held their value as well. And yes, even though Doom does have a multiplayer, that's clear clearly not why people buy it. Encouragingly, Bethesda hasn't been letting off the gas pedal either. Possible DLC for Prey are probably coming, and it looks like Rage 2 and Doom 2 are even on the horizon, and single player gamers are generally pretty hyped and ready to buy a lot of this stuff. So it's very interesting to wonder what EA might be thinking these days. They've spent many years doubling down on the idea of everything being online and never ending, while Bethesda, a comparable company with probably even less resources than EA, continues to roll forward with quality single player games that people buy to keep Bethesda's lights on. I think the lesson here is that you don't have to side with either style of game, but rather it's very smart to be open to both when they make more sense. Putting lots of focus on the multiplayer games makes sense sometimes, and doing everything that you can to craft an interesting challenging story mode and leave it alone makes more sense for other franchises. After all, Bethesda does have multiplayer experiences that are meant to keep players coming back and possibly spending more money later on. Quick Champions are excellent examples of that, and there's nothing wrong with those games existing for that audience. Even if you personally don't like them, we all know that keeping your portfolio diverse is a healthy thing. Keeping your audience just as diverse is also very smart in today's gaming world. The fact of the matter is, there's just too many gamers out there for any publisher to decide to forsake an entire style of game. It makes no more sense to assume that single player games are going away than it does to assume that games like Fortnite and Overwatch are. 
power. There's more than enough room for Wolfensteins to exist alongside our PUBGs and Counter-Strikes. Maybe EA will get the memo on this. Maybe they'll finally take these lessons and embrace the reality that single player games are just as relevant as they ever were and emphasizing games as a service in addition to quality single player experiences is perhaps a better way to go than seeing them as a replacement. Could we start to see that DICE level of polish being refocused on developing characters and storylines instead of developing arbitrary systems? Well, probably not, at least not anytime soon. But E3 is coming up and there's lots of games that are going to be announced as 2018 rolls on, so we'll just have to wait and see. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.